Welcome to the Voice of the Coast. I am your host, Danica Long, and with me we have Jermaine Grimm, who is an author, has a new book that's out, and we love you guys to take an opportunity and check it out. Let's talk about it. And it is actually NIL Brand Wealth, right? Right. Okay. NIL Compliance oh. and Wealth Generation. Right, but we're talking about money. Right. That's what we're talking about. So, <laughs> you know, and I, I, I know you were an athlete at one time in your life, and now you actually train athletes. Uh, you wear many hats. Yes. Uh, right. Many, many hats. But let's talk about what inspired you to be an author. To give back some information to my son, um, that's the first thing. I give him tips and knowledge all the time, but I just wanted to write it down. And I was thinking about it, why not? Put it in an ebook, or why not put it in a book so everybody can? And this, when this changed, um, it kind of changed the focus of the parents and the student athletes when they think about name, uh, image, and likeness. Now you can monetize off of that. So where do you start? Is the question. And the things that you can start with is monetizing the access of social media and how to use it as a tool compared to using it as entertainment. Now, I love this. Now, let's go on and go back to your son. Mm -hmm. uh, I know he's seven years old. And tell us about him because, you know, dad's into sports. Is he into sports? Uh, he loves sports. Uh, I train, and I don't force him to train with me or anything like that. I just wanted to see if he liked it first or enjoyed just to be around the competitive nature. But at the end of the day, I want him to be intelligent and be aware of the situations that's going around him. And with the world just changing so complexly, you can be focused on anything, but I want the child to understand that, hey, you can do anything that you want to do, but I want you to be fit and understand that it's competitiveness nature is always a good thing. Now, you mentioned the acronym already, but let's kind of go back to NIL. What's the acronym? Uh, name, image, and likeness. Mm -hmm. That means you can monetize off that now. That's been changed about almost two years. It has been, and it's 32 states right now that you can monetize from high school and in college now. But now the kids about 10, 11 years old need to focus on, hey, you, I have a cell phone in my hand now. Now you have to focus on how can I use this and monetize off of it. This can help when I say generational uh, wealth, but we wealth generation. So because it's just changed and a lot of people can get more money from just monetizing their lifestyle. So this is interesting. So a high school student athlete can make money right. off of his or her brand right. and who they are. Mm -hmm. Now, let's just say, you know, not everybody's a LeBron. Right. Let's just be real, <laughs> not everybody's a LeBron. But, you know, what if the kid is mediocre? Can he or she also use their image to make money? I'm glad you asked that because there's a lot of instances that people on a team um, has many followers and start many followers. Uh, a student athlete was on uh, the team that went to the Final Four. He only played a few minutes, but he captured the moments by going live before and after to get the following. He ended up getting 500,000 followers, and that can change everything because when you look at the brands, brands come to you after that because they want to hop on the bandwagon, of course, and see your audience, and you can help with that and bridge the gap. Right. Now, of course, let's talk about, talk about college students. And you know, there's been some scandals out there about college students getting paid and all these right. different things. I mean, how can you safeguard these student athletes, especially their parents, too? Because, I mean, it's not just the student. You have parents that are also involved. Well, that's one thing that I always want to talk about. You have to be compliant. And that's what the e-book talks about. You have to be compliant. You have to have legal service. You have to have a brand strategist. And sometimes you have to have um, personal trainers. All these things into one can help your child and see a different light and that you haven't seen before. And it is open up a brand new door to have generational wealth in the beginning. And then once you think about it, uh, it once you get that money, I mean, now is what? How you manage the money. Mm -hmm. So now you got to think about LLCs. And at that time when I was younger, we wasn't thinking about that. Right. Now is the opportunity that it's a brand new door that's open. Let's walk into it uh, with our hands together and say, humbly, let's do this together. Right. So 
pretty much you the student is a business they right. are a business and i can't quote the jay-z lyric yeah. i'm gonna look during the during the break but he mentioned something about being the business i gotta i right. gotta find that lyric but right i actually quote that in my book okay right he's uh i'm not a businessman but i'm a business, business man. man yeah <laughs> you know what i'm saying so, okay right y'all give right. me give me me right. you know <laughs> but i love it so you're you're getting these these students started how early this will be the last question so how early can students start well as early as they are aware to it, the parents actually the parents is they have to think about it firsthand and then they have coaches and personal trainers and stuff like that and if you coming along and you you building up your following sometimes it's not all about the athlete and, and the athlete sign of you it can be the other signs of you but i'm looking at it as as early as 10 or 11. Awesome. All right, y'all come on back right here on The Voice of the Coast with yours truly. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Voice of the Coast. Again, I am your host, Danica Long. With me is Jermaine Grimm, who is the author of NIL Compliance and Brand Wealth, Wealth Strategy. Is that right? NIL, Compliance, and Generational Wealth. Thank wealth you, generation, generation Wealth. I know it's about brand and wealth. Yes, so I apologize. <laughs> so, so yes, but the, the information sounds really good. Right. Okay, and so we're talking about building a student's brand, right, via social media, but are there other ways to build their brand? Right, and sometimes a lot of people that don't have social media should network a lot. In the community, talk to the people that have a network of people in the audience that you can talk to. Uh, work on your interview skills because at this point when you get those deals or you need to talk to somebody, you need to have a portfolio. A uh, portfolio and a website so you can monetize off your website as well. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be like a funnel. You can use your YouTube, uh, Instagram, and Facebook mm -hmm. and use it as a funnel to monetize and get things done and be affiliated marketer. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually, uh, I have an NIL certificate and I just graduated from the University of Minnesota with a UX UI design degree. Uh, so that helps with me to give a big picture of what we're doing and how we pivot um, from brand off the court and on the court. Right. Okay. Now we're talking a lot of good stuff here, but folks are like, okay, Danico, where can we buy this book? Where is it? So <laughs> kind of just give them a shout out to where they can find this information. Well, I have a QR code here. You can actually scan it right now. If you want to scan this QR code, right? And let's do it one more time. Hold it up a little bit oh, longer. I'm sorry. <laughs> People got to grab their phones right quick. All right. You awesome. can scan this QR code right now. All right. Sounds good. Go ahead. All right. And is there are there any other locations? It will be on Amazon, and um, right now it's on PayHip.com. Uh, but once you scan the code, it goes to, right to my uh, link tree, mm -hmm. and we have a Facebook group and pages. And also, we have services as far as if somebody wants some training for basketball training, uh, for their uh, skill level, with any kind of skill level, we do that as well. Right. And in, within the book, you offer some resources, right? I mean, because you said it's outside of social media. There's other things you need to know, such as uh, interviewing skills. <coughs> Contact me because they right. got to get this together, right? Right. right? right. And shout out to it. <laughs> Because, oh, uh, no, 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 but that's not, let's not talk about me. Let's talk about you, though. No, I just had to throw that in there, but no, just let's talk about more about what you do, because you do offer resources, correct? Right. We offer the resources of, uh, if you want to have interview skills, if you want to step into the, uh, a field of, let's be more professional, we can do that. Uh, we can have mock interviews. Also, we, we talk about the things as getting the knowledge of the new concept of how you monetize off your likeness your image okay. and uh, your name. All right, and also, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about this, about the scandal sometimes that college students kind of get themselves in. I mean, do you uh, talk about sports agents and the relationships building with a lot of the, the agents? Right, uh, right now, um, like I say, you can monetize so you can have representation. So I definitely think that you should have a uh, council that uh, you should seek out, um, plus other means of resources to know and to read up on everything, or to ask somebody like a brand strategist, uh, a, somebody that you can trust 
that um, been through the process and want to help you succeed in all areas. Okay. Now you want to take it from the book to brick and mortar. So right. you've, you've started off writing. So now you want to actually build a business, an actual uh, place. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, um, I'm in the process of being a financial advisor. So any things about life insurance or anything like that, we can, once you get your uh, NAIL um, certificate or uh, money, you have to manage that money. And certain ways you can do that as far as giving it back to the life insurance and putting it in a trust. And as many processes you can take from uh, anything from clothing, uh, you want to start, uh, even if you want to write an ebook or anything like that and monetize off of that, uh, you can do that. Last question for you. Uh, what, name some people, or can you, you know, maybe not their names, but that you've helped. Right. Uh, a lot of people that I helped um, to start training off was uh, Makai, Richard, Taylor, Grogan, they all, uh, all Americans at this point. And there's a lot of people in the community that I have helped. Uh, I've been a uh, referee for a while, coach, and I have many degrees to, to uh, attest to that and the people in the community to help me out. Awesome. All right, again, ladies and gentlemen, Jermaine Grimm, who is an author of his very own ebook, NIL Compliance and Wealth Generation. I want to make sure I got that <laughs> right because it definitely is about brand as well right, as about definitely. wealth. So thank you very much and thank you guys for joining us. Stay with us. We have much more to come. Welcome back to The Voice of the Coast. I am your host, Danica Long. With me, we have a very special and colorful guest. His name is Ephraim Zimbalist Randall. I got that right? You did. I sure did, but we're, we're going to call him Ephraim. I like Ephraim Zimbalist, but we're going to call you Ephraim. And we're talking about the EBP party, and that is the Ephraim Zimbalist Benefit Party. And I think there's going to be some really good information that we're going to disseminate to all of you, so stick around. So Ephraim, you are originally from Franklin, yes, um, however you live in Denham Springs now. Yes, so what brings you back home? Well, um, every year I throw this party, it's a, it's a benefit party, and what we do is we, we raise money and we just basically give it back to the community. And so let me tell you something. You said it's a birthday party. And yeah. I know whenever I have my birthday party, it's all about me. Yeah. It's all about Danica. Yeah. But your birthday party is about the community. Yeah. Yeah. And 80% of the proceeds that you raise goes back to the community. How did that idea come up? Who says all of this is going back to the community, which I think is to be applauded? Well, the idea came up when I was writing one night when I was talking to this guy, right, about uh, a party that he and I, well, actually his name was Troy Washington, mm -hmm. right? And he and I were talking about a party and I was like, okay, I'm gonna have a party, bro. And then I was driving and I was driving, just thinking and thinking. And I was like, well, I'm gonna spend all this money on a party. I'm like, why not, you know, if I'm gonna spend money on a party, give it back, you know, make a difference, make a change. Mm -hmm. So I said to myself, okay, I'm gonna give it back to the community. And that's how EBP came up, the EBP community. Yeah. yeah Ephraim birthday party community okay so why are you giving back I mean what is it that pushed you to do this what is your reason your purpose really it started for me the gun violence you know I, I, me being being able to identify with what, what's going on because I was once there you know I uh, I decided I was like hey I can relate it's something I have to say and I can say it, and I just started the platform. And you know, that's my way of giving back. And, and, and how so, how can you relate? I mean, how does this hit home for you? Well, when I was younger, I, uh, I was in the streets as well. I sold drugs and did everything that came along with it. You know, and uh, I know now that wasn't the right way. And if I could catch some of these guys before, you know, before they make a tragic decision, you know, that's what I'm here for. What I like about your story is that at your core, you are St. Mary Parish. From one end of the parish to the other, your life started on Friendship Alley wow, in Amelia. Yeah, yeah. And you mentioned that you had your strongest friendships after you moved from Friendship Alley to Franklin. Yeah. So Franklin is, is really home, home for you and, and, and those friendships. Tell me about those friendships and what they mean to you. 
Well, you know, what's funny about this is the friendships that I developed throughout the years, I still have them. And though we may be living different lives, you know, I still can relate to the guys that are from the area. Uh, they mean the world to me. The friendships mean the world to me. Although, we, like, again, we don't, we're not doing the same things. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons I'm giving back as well, because some of the kids or some of the people that I developed these friendships with, they're lacking some of the structure that we had while we were growing up. Mm -hmm. So that's why, you know, that's another reason I decided to give back. Awesome. Yeah. So what, where will the proceeds go? Where is $30 for a ticket, mm -hmm. a pretty nominal fee for what I understand. This is a really big deal. Mm -hmm. Your third time with this, with the, um, the benefit party. Where do the proceeds go? Well, 80% of the proceeds go right back to the, to the community. The other 20%, right, goes to help keep EBP running. Of course, you know, we, you know, we just like any other organization, we need money to run. So you take 80%, Give to the community in form of scholarships, and what other drives we decide, what other uh, areas we decide to give it back in, like for maybe uh, bikes. We buy bikes for them. We well for the kids, for the community. We also we purchase a lot of different things for the community, and we need the money from events like this here to sponsor it. I want to know more about the scholarships. We'll talk about that when we come back. We'll take a short break, but come on back right here on the Voice of the Coast. Again, our guest is Ephraim Zimbalist Randall. Welcome back to the Voice of the Coast. Again, I am your host, Danica Foley Long. With me, we have Ephraim Zimbalis Randall, who is the founder of the EBP, which is the Ephraim Birthday Party or Benefit Party. Yes now in its third year and 80 percent of the proceeds will be going back into the community particularly for West St. Mary and Franklin High School in the form of a scholarship. Tell me a little bit about the scholarship and how does one um, you know get a scholarship or obtain one? Okay well uh, the scholarships are fifteen hundred dollars a piece. We have two scholarships per school. Uh, you can go on ebpcommunity.org to, to download. It's a downloadable application. Or you could, uh, or the scholarships are actually on the school's website. So if you're at Franklin Senior High, you can go on Franklin Senior High website, and you, could, you can also download the uh, application there, right? Or if you're at West St. Mary, you can go on their website, and you can down the, download the application there as well. Awesome. Now tell me about the event. I mean, you got a whole party named in your honor. <laughs> Um, and this beautiful flyer we have here. What is at the benefit party? I mean, it's third year going on, so what can we expect? I, you know what, I'm so excited about this year because we have so many people that's attending. Uh, Ms. Rack, Ms. Pearl, Ms. Yeah. I call her Ms. Ms. Rack, but her name is Ms. Pearl. Mm -hmm. She's actually gonna be the speaker this year. We're gonna have uh, two hosts this year. Uh, we're gonna have um, my dance. I do a dance annually. You know, my wife and I. Yeah, we get to. We, yeah, we get to. Come do on, this is gonna be an extravaganza. Yeah, okay. We do that. <laughs> also, we have DJ Fab, the hottest DJ in the yes. area. You know, he's he's gonna be on the ones and twos. He's gonna be doing this thing. So we just we gonna have a great time. Let's go back to this dance. What kind of what are we talking about? You know, like yeah, what, what? Well, it's every year I pick uh -huh. out a song uh -huh. that I can relate to. Uh -huh. It involves what I've been through that year. Okay. And I, you know, I use that song and I dance because it's, you know this is my part in it. The year before, I'm like, you know, throughout the year, I'm going through it, going through it. But this is where I get to let my hair down, Come you on. know, and do my thing. So I, I like to dance. Yeah. <laughs> I love yeah. it. Okay, yeah. so tell me a little bit about who you are. You know, you said at one time you were in the streets and you've turned your life around. So who is Ephraim? Ephraim Zimbalist is an entrepreneur now. You know, I have a few businesses and um, I like to help out people now. I, I mean, everything from me being associated with the sober living houses to being associated with the Serenity House to the O'Brien's House. These are all places that people go to uh, to get assistance with their addictions, with their issues, you know, drug issues. Some of them might have mental issues. I'm affiliated with these organizations as well. So. And, and, you know, a lot of times people, it, you know, they go away, they do well for themselves, mm -hmm. and you're, you're an example of that. But talking to you, you said, you want to come home. Mm -hmm. Why? This is where it all started. I mean, it's, it is, as I told the students that I talked to about a week ago, if everybody in the neighborhood or in the community 
you know, take resources out and nobody replenish it, the resources, then we won't have anything left for people that actually need it. Mm -hmm. So my thing is, once I make the money, whatever, I'm doing just like the, I, I, was, I, the, I just would say the foreigners, how they do, they take their money and they, they send it back home. So I'm taking the money and I'm bringing it back home. Basically, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and also, there's some future plans. I mean, what, what do you want to do? I mean, I know you have the birthday party. That's in the works right now. Mm -hmm. But what are some other things that you think you, you will do or want to do to further this, these opportunities? Um, that's a good question. I've been thinking about how can I effectively change some of the things that's been going on in the community. And uh, me and Miss Nish was talking about a center. So I might be putting a lot of effort and works behind a center for St. Mary Parish, and hopefully the home will be Morgan City. So that's what I want to do. Okay. And I want to continue doing what I'm doing with the scholarships. And whoever has an issue in the community and they need funding and, and, and they think that it's, it, it aligns with what I do, I want them to come talk to me. So an angel yeah. investor, so I like yeah. that idea. I might be giving you a call. <laughs> with that, we thank you very much for being with us, and we'll see you guys next time.